Okay. This is working just fine. Alright, we're done here. Perfect. Okay, I'll switch this over to launch coverage now. Uh, next time we play Satisfactory, I'll work on getting the refineries ready to go. Uh, we gotta take that apart and redo it, but we made an insane amount of progress today, which is actually pretty rad. Let's go over Chain here. Back to that section above the first stage and above that black carbon oh, fiber interstate, you'll see Falcon 9's second stage. About two and a half minutes into the flight, the stages will separate, the second stage will ignite its single Merlin vacuum engine and carry itself and the XP payload into a XB. circular orbit. Now, if the launch wasn't cool enough, XP also marks the first Falcon 9 launch into an equatorial orbit. That means that the satellite will fly into an orbit that goes along the equator, which we refer to as having an inclination of about zero degrees. Getting to an equatorial orbit from Florida requires a lot of rocket performance and propellant, yeah. so we won't be able to land the first stage back on land. Instead, we'll attempt to land the first stage on our drone ship stationed off the coast of Florida while the second stage completes its orbital insertion burn. Now, the second stage will perform a second burn about good, 20 Dave. minutes How later to get to that final circular equatorial orbit, followed shortly after by satellite deployment around T plus 33 minutes. Today's mission also marks the smallest dedicated payload that a Falcon 9 rocket has ever launched by a pretty large margin, making for a very roomy payload fairing at liftoff. <laughs> now, speaking of which, the fairing is that nose cone structure at the very top of the vehicle above the second stage. The fairing protects the XP satellite from aerodynamic XP. heating, loads, and <laughs> contamination during the like ascent it. portion XP. of the mission. Now it's made of two fairing halves. Both of those are brand new today, and we're planning to recover them on our recovery ship named Bob, which is stationed out in the Atlantic Ocean. Bob. Now we're coming up Hello on there. about T minus 12 and a half minutes to lift off. The launch vehicle and satellite teams are continuing towards an ah. on-time liftoff scheduled for 1 a.m. Eastern time. Falcon 9 team began their final checks at about T minus two hours. Most recently, we completed the ground oh, no, team poll right. to proceed with propellant load and launch that happened at T minus 38 minutes. We began loading propellants at the T minus 35 minute mark. Falcon 9 is a bi-propellant vehicle. That means we have two propellants on board, a fuel and an oxidizer. For Falcon 9, our fuel is a refined form of kerosene that we call RP-1 or Rocket Propellant 1. And to burn that fuel, we need an oxidizer. On Earth, most combustion or burning uses oxygen for- Guys, this launch, some, something's weird. There's ice all over the RP-1 tank. I breathe. However, in space, we don't have an atmosphere to provide that oxygen or other oxygen-bearing molecules, so rockets need wrong, to carry their own. There's on usually Falcon 9, the oxidizer is super-chilled liquid oxygen, what we call densified LOX, and we chill it well below its boiling point, which increases its density and allows us to load more onto See, the, the first and second the stage of LOX the tanks. It's not supposed to do now, that. Currently, we are fully loaded. But that could just be, it's very its very likely that it could just be the atmospheric conditions. It's not very windy in Florida tonight. So you see how the, you see how the condensation is kind of propagating all on the sides there. But I just noticed that there's a lot of it coming from the landing legs. There's condensation coming from the landing legs. I mean, it could be nothing. I don't know. Plumes that you see around the vehicle. Now, once fully fueled, Falcon 9's first and second stage combined to carry okay, over 1.1 million pounds of propellant. And we're burned through most of that Look. in the about eight and a half minutes that it takes to land Look. the first stage There's and to get that second stage of into its leg. initial See orbit. That? We'll also need an igniter to just be uh, burn yeah, you guys might that fuel and oxidizer. And for that, we use a chemical called TTEB that stands for triethyl aluminum and triethyl borane. When it combines, it produces a characteristic green, green flash that we can sometimes see at the base like of the that, vehicle, Logan. and Why that ignites our Merlin engines. Then those Merlin engines, the nine sense. at the bottom of the first stage, will begin throwing out their combustion exhaust out of nozzles at the bottom of the rocket, and that pushes the vehicle in the opposite direction. It's a great example of Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now, quick update on the weather. We started the day with a 10% probability of violating launch weather requirements. That is to say that we have a 90% chance of go. I've uh, been listening to the loops and we aren't tracking any significant issues that we expect us, that would yeah. expect us to hold towards no today's problem, launch at 1 a.m. Eastern time. Okay. 
Okay. The weather conditions also look good for booster landing on our drone ship and for fairing recovery out in the Atlantic. So with that, the launch vehicle, yes, satellite, yes, weather, and the range are looking good to go for that 1 a.m. Eastern time liftoff from Launch Complex no, 39A. Know. Well, I don't know, Clayton, we're not listening to the flight loop. Now, as I mentioned listening, earlier, listening today's to XP mission Shiva's is for our customer, NASA, and it's the first NASA Launch Services program mission being launched from Launch Pad 39A. LSP. But it also marks SpaceX's fifth as part of the NASA Launch Services program missions. Those miss science missions include the double asteroid redirect test mission that we launched a few weeks ago, Psyche. the Sentinel-6 Michael Freilich mission in 2020, the transiting exoplanet survey satellite yes. launched in 2018, and Jason-3, which launched in 2016. But our payload tonight is a collaboration between NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, the Italian Space Agency, hey. and Ball Aerospace. The Imaging X-ray Polarimetry Explorer will help us understand fundamental physics of some of the most energetic cosmic objects in the universe the by hell? studying the special properties of the X-rays that they emit. NASA's Tiffany Russell Lockett will give us a closer look at the main components of XP, where those X-rays come from, and how studying their polarization will help us better understand the, co the universe in the years to come. To answer some of the biggest <laughs> questions about what's out there what in the happened? universe and what it all means, we need powerful telescopes. NASA unravels the mysteries of the cosmos using observatories in space spins. that study the different wavelengths and properties of light. The Imaging <laughs> X-ray Polarimetry Explorer, or IXB, will study X-rays from some of the most extreme objects in the universe, like black holes in a new way. Cool. XP will look at a special property of X-rays that has gone mostly unexplored until now. It's called polarization. X-rays come from the hottest places in the universe. Imagine powerful explosions, violent collisions, like and strong magnetic fields creating chaos in the darkness of deep space. Oh, this sounds weird. X-ray telescopes can trace clouds of gas heated to millions of degrees and detect the shower of particles hey, fueled that by was a feeding flux. black hole. Building on the discoveries Chandra. of NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory and other space telescopes, XB measures the orientation of X-rays from some of the most brilliant and bizarre objects in space. Like all forms of light, X-rays consist of moving electric and magnetic waves. Usually, the peaks and valleys of these waves move in random directions. Polarized light is more organized with the two types of waves vibrating in the same direction. You might have heard of polarized what? sunglasses. Boaters and fishermen use yeah. these lenses to reduce glare from sunlight across a body of water. Or Water reflects light in a way that causes some of it to vibrate in a direction parallel to the water's surface. Polarized lenses block light moving horizontally, but let other light through. Much like the way light changes when it bounces off of water, in space, light becomes polarized depending on where it comes from and what it passes through. By measuring the amount and direction of polarization, XB gives us clues about the shapes, structures, and inner workings Nobody of all types of objects that shine in bright X-rays. That's the cool, XB man. Observatory has three identical telescopes with three main parts, mirrors, detectors, and an extendable mast or boom that separates them. Each mirror assembly contains 24 nested mirrors that collect and focus X-rays. Located at the focal point of the mirrors, sensitive detectors made with international partners in Italy are the secret behind XP's unique X-ray vision. And it works they like a track microscope. and measure all four properties of incoming light. It's arrival time, direction, energy, and most importantly, polarization. Over the two years of its and prime it, it mission, rotates, XP so will observe like more than 50 brilliant objects. Cool. Like the leftovers of huge stars that exploded into supernovae the supermassive black hole at the heart of our own Milky Way galaxy, and pulsars, the dense remains of stars that once were. 
These observations will help scientists tackle long-standing puzzles, like testing competing theories about pulsars and the details of how Einstein's theory of general relativity works. New insights from ICSPE will help us paint a fuller picture of the universe, confirming or confounding our thinking in the years to come. Now we're just uh, oh, over okay. T minus okay, four minutes it. away from liftoff oh, of the Falcon 9 open. carrying the XP satellite. You can see the uh, strong back arms, the clamp arms that are around the second stage are starting to open. Those are attached to a structure, that truss Directly structure called the transporter erector or the TE. And in preparation for launch, we'll open up those clamp arms, the transporter erector will uh, slowly retract away from the stage. Not very long, As we get closer to T minus zero, days. ground hydraulic yeah, systems days, cool? will further pull the TE away, clearing the way for Falcon 9 as it proceeds into its liftoff. Uh, we refer to the transporter erector sometimes zero as the strong back, and you heard that call out on the loops. I think. I'm now the transporter sure erector is used to roll Falcon 9 out to the launch pad and raises it into the vertical launch position. It also routes power, fluid, uh, and I'm communications fun, so to you, both the rocket and Stage the satellite. We just heard a call out there for some of those fluids that completed loading on the first stage. We've completed loading all propellants on Falcon 9's first stage. It's an X-ray imaging telescope, Taco, looking at X-rays. Now the first the stage universe, is connected so to the base of that transporter erector cool. by a hinge structure. Cool and again, that'll retract further away from the vehicle in preparation for launch. I know, mind drive, isn't it legit? The white gas that you're seeing around the vehicle is just from that chilled uh, liquid oxygen and some periodic venting around the vehicle. When it comes into contact with the moist Florida air, causes water vapor to condense and forms literal clouds around the vehicle. Now at this point in the countdown, we're about 20 seconds away from completing propellant load on the second stage. And once that's complete, the uh, propellant loading will be complete on both the first and second stage. Yeah, see? That cloud is still down there on that RP-1 tank. Stage 2, lock float is complete. But, so with uh, that call out, we've completed loading propellants onto Falcon 9. Coming up next, we'll see uh, some venting from the transporter erector. So we'll clear I mean, out the liquid oxygen from the propellant feeder lines, and you'll see that as some orange. white venting around the vehicle. There it goes. And then the next activity after will happen around T minus 60 seconds <laughs> when Falcon 9 transitions to internal control via its autonomous flight computers. Gas closeouts has started. Okay, T gas closeout has started. They're basically getting the propellants out of the TE. The TE has the fuel lines for the second stage. Now, once stage. Falcon 9 has taken over the so launch they, countdown, they, it'll they continue to have control of Falcon 9 through the rest sure of the mission. You know, the, the launch director the launch will give their yeah, final go for out. launch if all conditions continue to look good. And then at about T minus two seconds, we'll ignite those nine Merlin 1D engines for oh. liftoff. All right, man. Hey, no problem. Don't worry about it. Falcon is in startup. So with that, the XP satellite continues to look healthy. Falcon 9 it team is tracking no yeah. issues. It, Falcon 9 is it, in startup. It must be okay. It, it's it's just atmospheric, LB guys. go for XP launch. Okay. So the launch director has given their final go for launch. So with that, we're proceeding into the last 30 seconds of the terminal Zero count. Seconds. Give us 30 seconds. Let's listen in as Falcon 9 takes XP into orbit. Water's getting on the lens from the sound suppressor. That's why this camera shot sucks all of a sudden. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7. Six, oh, there we go. Five, All right, four, let's see, what, see if three, there's anything. Two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Okay, go she's Falcon. going. Good hunting, ISPE. No XP. Yep, look fine. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Okay. Go, baby, go! First stage chamber pressures. We've watched three rockets fly today, man. 
technically two yesterday, one today, but still, still. Fire coming down from the bottom. T plus 40 That's seconds normal. into flight, successful liftoff of the Falcon 9 from Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy nominal. Space Center. Turbo We're carrying the XP satellite no, into an equatorial Merlin's orbit, and we just throttled down the nine Merlin 1D no, no, engines no. in preparation for the next event. That's the point of max Yada. Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure. Yeah. That coming up in about 10 seconds. Vehicle is supersonic. Okay. 68 seconds, over 700 miles an hour. She's booking. Max Q. Maximum dynamic pressure. So with that, we are through the highest stresses on the vehicle from the combination of our increasing velocity and the decreasing atmospheric density. Sugoi. Coming up next, oh, the next event in about a minute summer. will be Nico, that's thing. main engine cutoff. Ah, we'll I, shut down I, those Sugoi. nine Merlin 1D engines in preparation for the next event, stage separation. The first and second stages will separate, and then at about T plus two minutes, 44 seconds, we'll have SES-1, yep. or second mm -hmm. engine start or number Linux. one. That's Linux. where the Merlin vacuum Sorry, engine on the while. second stage will ignite to carry the second stage and the XB payload into orbit. Yeah, you, you, they can, they so can Again, those it. three events coming up in succession, Miko, main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation, and then SES-1. And this view, looking down on the Merlin 1D engines from the first stage, you can see the plume expanding as the atmospheric density drops off. So we get higher and higher in our atmosphere. Yep, ambient pressure goes down as you get higher, so the gas is kind of expanding. This really awesome phenomenon here. Now we're, we're looking up the business end of the second stage engine here. Uh, stand by for the call for main engine cutoff, and then you. The call usually comes before we see the picture, so. First stage engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. There we go. Stand by for upper stage ignition. And back ignition. Stiffen ring separation on the right hand screen. So those three yep. events successful main Perfect. engine cutoff, stage separation, left hand side of your screen, so you can see a view of the first not, stage deploying its all. grid fins, God starting damn, its recovery sequence. So the second stage second on the right-hand side of your screen, we've got a shot fin, of the Merlin vacuum engine glowing uh, as it continues its ignition to carry XB into orbit. Next major event coming up will be fairing deployment. 20 feet tall. At this point, Fucking... the second yeah, stage... Stage two on um, Close, trajectory. Though. The second stage uh, is getting to a part of the atmosphere nozzle. with very low density, Look. so we don't need to carry... Check this out. Look. There's all of Florida. You can see the entire I-4 corridor. There's Daytona Beach, Orlando, Titusville, the Cape. You can see a little bit of Tampa there too. That's pretty awesome. Fairing separation confirmed. Fairing set confirmed. Look at this, this is a little baby. This is a little baby satellite. There's <laughs> confirmation this, of the little, fairing deploy. The XB satellite now guy. getting directly exposed to the vacuum satellite. of space. Yeah, it's be and those fairing heads yeah, again will be attempting to recover those with our recovery that, vessel that named Bob, is like which is out in the Atlantic Ocean. So small. I know, man. It's very, very nice. Yep. If you see any pulsing coming from up here on the the, the so Milo if you're just rap, joining us, welcome. We're about T plus four and a half. Uh, excuse me, That's four. Normal. Minutes and 20 you seconds into today's on mission. Signal for yes, on your screen is a view of the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. It's uh, completing its Bonjour. first of two planned burns to take the XB satellite into Go an initial I, parking XB orbit. John. So at an on time liftoff at 1 a.m. Eastern time. The first stage that carried the second stage Payload's really uh, this like far. Question. Second stage separated has a lot of and is on its way back to planet Earth. Like its next major activity will happen change, at about T plus insane. six minutes and 20 seconds. And that'll be for the entry burn, where it'll ignite deflect, a few of its an engines to slow yep. down in preparation once. for or maybe twice, three entering times the Earth's the atmosphere. Latest. Now, during the entry burn, we'll relight three of the Merlin 1D engines on the first stage 
that'll start with the center engine followed shortly after yeah, this is by a very small uh, two of the side for, engines. For, for, for that'll Falcon slow down the vehicle tiny. as we pass back into Earth's atmosphere. And we need to slow down on the first stage to reduce the entry forces, Expandable. which helps this, us recover and expendable. reuse that first stage. stage. Yeah, yeah, Reusability is a key Plus part stage two on nominal trajectory. Okay. of lowering the cost of space flight, which enables more investment into the critical scientific hardware and research. Now, Falcon 9's first stage that supported today's mission will perform this entry burn for the fifth time, having previously done so for the Crew-1, Crew-2, Sirius XM-8, and Sirius 23 missions. It has and the Delta V to be able to put it into this will also re-enter Earth's so it can get it atmosphere for the first time. The second stage continuing to burn. Its burn will continue until about T plus eight minutes. And we've heard periodic call-outs that we are seeing nominal performance and following a nominal that, trajectory. Stage one FTS is safe. It's on some the of the second ablation stage. from inside of the nozzle passing wind. You get oscillations like that sometimes. There's a first stage camera. Stage one entry burn startup. Oh, so it's left time hand side of your screen, you can see the grid fins and you can propulsion. see the plume from the entry burn. At this point, we are firing three of part. the Merlin 1D engines. And uh, we're they never no, say not. this on the dang cast. That entry burn is the heat shield for Falcon 9. You notice that Falcon 9 can just come right back through the atmosphere, no problem. It doesn't have a heat shield, no tiles, no nothing like that. SpaceX fires the rocket engines at the plasma, the re-entry heat that accumulates during, during entry, and the rocket engine pushes it out of the way. That's the heat shield. The rocket engine is the heat shield. The rocket engine firing is the heat shield. That's re they never they never say that, but that's the coolest part. They never talk For about the that. the first stage will be it's the landing burn that will happen at about my favorite part of Falcon plus Nine. eight minutes and ten seconds. Say the word, streamer. Second stage continuing to look nominal. <laughs> now the engines Entry on burn. both the first and second stage are different. The Merlin engines no on the first stage so are optimized guidance. for sea level thrust but the Merlin vacuum engine that you see on your screen is optimized for vacuum. And the difference there is how much we can expand Stage the pressurized two, is gases that are being produced by the Merlin Stage engine. One, transonic. Okay, Stage one is... Call out there for Stage one the being transonic, sound. so it's transitioning from supersonic speeds back to subsonic speed. No, Flacken, you need T-tab. And next events What's coming up? up will be second engine cutoff number one that's shut down of this Merlin vacuum engine. And uh, pretty close after, we'll hear a call out for, for landing landings, burn Sion. startup on the first stage. That's where the NASA came up with the idea for Mars landings. So yes, absolutely. It works on Earth though. Fun. Stage Sorry. one landing burn. And back engine cutoff. Okay. So shut down of the second Merlin engine vacuum cutoff, engine. Confirm. We've and got landing burn startup on the first stage. Left-hand side of your screen is a shot from the drone ship. Nominal stage orbit one, landing like deploy. And correction, that's a shot from the first stage. And on the right-hand side is a shot from the drone ship. We've deployed the landing okay. legs, hopefully for a soft touchdown that on good. just read the instructions. That looked all right, the engine stage one, up. landing confirmed. Boom! Ha-ha! <laughs> and that, dead center. that is a... Nice. 97th successful recovery of a first stage on our drone ship named Just Read the Instructions. This particular okay. first stage uh, having scored fifth, five flights under its belt. Now the mission isn't over just yet. The second stage on your screen is now embarking on its first coast phase and it's in its nominal orbit. So after this coast phase, we'll light the Merlin vacuum engine for a second time oh, around T plus 29 minutes to put it into the final circular orbit for payload deployment. We'll see you back here in about 20 right. minutes. But in the meantime, enjoy the space jams and the views of the stages. How come it's landing on the drone ship if it has the Delta V? It, it needs the Delta V to be able to do that 27 degree plane change here. SES, SES 2 and Seco 2 coming up on the timeline, guys, are a very, very Delta V intensive burn. Falcon 9, if it was just putting this into, if it just launched due east out of Kennedy Space Center and just kept going east, it would put it into a 27 degree inclined orbit. Why? Because Kennedy Space Center is 27 degrees north latitude. All right? So what SpaceX basically has to do down here, they have to take a left. They have to take a big left-hand turn. 
The thing is, it's a little bit delta V intensive to take a turn when you're going 27,000 miles, uh, kilometers an hour, not miles an hour, 17,000 miles an hour. Uh, it, it's a little, it takes a lot of fuel to be able to change the trajectory when you're going 27,000 miles an hour in one direction. That's what they need the extra delta V for. Falcon 9 has plenty of delta V to be able to put a small satellite like this into space, but this thing needs to be following Earth's equator, so you need a bigger rocket to be able to do this on-orbit plane change with the satellite, because NASA can't get anything into a perfect equatorial orbit from any of their launch sites. Does that make sense? Also... I don't know, Harp. No problem, Red Wing. They are element. That's exactly what they're doing. This is the best SpaceX space tune song ever. Bother me when I'm jamming. Enjoy the music. last before you started jamming. Oh, oh wait, wait, oh, oh wait, Chris, sorry, wait, I, I'm sorry, I didn't, you're going into it, you're going into a tunnel, I didn't see what you said last, I, did, I didn't see it, I didn't, I'm sorry, you, you're going into a tunnel, you're going into a tunnel, sorry, the reception, the plasma re-entry heating, sorry. That's really not how to fly. How long is the SCS2 bird expected to last? 30 seconds? Maybe a little bit longer? <laughs> Alright, mind drive, hell yeah. This is awesome. Awesome track series. Soon, Corza. I, especially, I don't know. I don't think they're... What do they have left? Dude, they might nail 100 launches. Maybe. Or they might nail 100 landings by the end of the year. Maybe. It's possible. But, I don't know. Once we get to the second week in December, stuff tends to chill down a little bit because everybody's gone for the holidays and then it usually picks up in the fourth week in January like a lot and then it's just guns blazing oh 
Oh god, this song is so good, man. I love jamming to this song. up there hunts that's for sure with a small satellite you can do the plane change but yeah it's pretty crazy not tight at all stx this thing weighs like 170 kilos or something it's a little tiny boy Two boosters that have been reused ten times, one of them that's been reused nine, one of them that's been reused eight, and then I think a couple more at like five or six. I think. That's off the top of my head, so that's probably wrong. I know that there's two boosters that have done ten missions, which is crazy. They're gonna keep using them. This one was the sixth, it was the sixth for, yeah, triplicative, yeah, exactly. This was the sixth mission for this booster. I mean, six is still damn impressive, man. Trip, what, what's going to be nuts is that uh, if they try to use those the Falcon Nines that have flown before uh, uh, ten times, SpaceX always said that ten missions was really the the limit for Falcon Nine, and after that, they're like, I don't know. But you think they would have scrapped those boosters, right? But they're still around the, t the boosters that have flown 10 missions, so I think they're just gonna I think they're just gonna keep flying them until it doesn't work anymore. You know, like I'm not sure, Jim. Maybe they probably exceeded it a little bit, as but I'd be cautious to proceed because that's what it was engineered for. Now, don't get me wrong. Just because it was engineered for 10 missions doesn't mean it can't do 15. You know what I mean? Uh, a car, any car could do 500,000 miles, it's just some cars would need a lot more maintenance to go that far, you know? Someone make a Ford joke, I dare you. I dare you. I dare you, you stupid chat. Don't do it! But anyway, I, I think they've hit the 10, mi 10 booster mission. <laughs> Someone would do, do it, I dare, but Ford is the joke! Oh! Well guess what, Yarg? Boom! <laughs> Fix it again, EJ. <laughs> anyway, you guys suck. <laughs> um, admin abuse? Is it admin abuse cyberlink if it's a mod? Would you stop that? Did it take your mod away because I timed you out? Wait a minute, it did it again? <laughs> no. Oh no, no, you're good, you're good. <laughs> oh, that sucks. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, there, there we go. <laughs> I vote to replace Yarg with you. That's not an upgrade. <laughs> Holding one Bathurst. Ew. Gross. But I, I think the boosters could go more than 10 flights. Next SpaceX mission is going to be Turksat 5B from Slick 40 on the 19th using 1052.3, which was a Falcon Heavy side core. Cool. Oh, really, Taco? Nice. Mine was on purpose, so good to know. Here, hang on, guys. I gotta, I gotta freaking give Yarg his, uh, his roll back. <laughs> it's funny as hell. There you go. 
show. You're already chipping all good now. <laughs> One by an X4 driver? Ew. Gross. Stop. You're gonna make me throw up, Ellie. Do you have to give your his rolls back? I mean, really? I do. All right, see you guys, look at the tr look at the track. Look at look at the track right here. See the left-hand turn? They're going to take a left go at Albuquerque going 27,000 kilometers an hour. It's not over Albuquerque. Good, sleepy. Everything is good. I should be getting a 59 finish very soon. I got to send it out for the exhaust. Other than that, it's good to go. Gold Coast, so it's kind of kind of near Ghana. It's a little past Ghana. I'm not sure what country is where. It, I'm not sure what country it is where it's taking a left turn. Normal or an anti-normal burn? Uh, this would be a normal burn. Anti-normal would be going in the other direction. The turn would go that way if it was an anti-normal burn. What happened to the truck in your garage? We're working on. I still have it. It's almost done. No. Needs exhaust, and that's about it. Button up some things with the wiring, put the exhaust on, and then it's good to go. Got it running. We got it running on stream. The Congo is more inland. Streak shots are coming in. Cool, cool. It happens all the time, Sile, with flights that are going to the ISS. They film the launch from the ISS. Yeah, and it's as cool as you think it is. I'm Mr. Mon, yeah, yeah, there you go. The other Congo, you're a Congo. Yeah, see that? That's very Delta V intensive right there. But the fact that that satellite is so ridiculously small means that Falcon 9 can do it. But it, it, it can do it. If the satellite was double the size, it probably wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, they. They were definitely trying to get all the Delta V they possibly could. That's why they barge landed that first stage. You broke the editor stuff again. I didn't though. I Did I have a sign and no, reassign you line. already. Acquisition of signal, Gabon. Acquisition of signal through Gabon. Hey, WD40, thanks for the raid, man. Plutonium! 19 month reset. Delta V sounds like golden like a golden girl. Oh. Yeah. WD-40 raid with that streak shot, though. Nice, Bandit. Hey, Mods, can we get one Mr. Hamill uh, link perms? Mate, can you, can you give Hamill link perms so we can post that streak shot that WD-40 po posted? Supersonic Retro Propulsion Raid! You can see the Supersonic Retro Propulsion at the end. Let's take a look. Bro, what a shot. This is a tight this is a Titusville, dude, yeah? Oh yeah, there it is up there. And, oh, you can see the landing burn, dude. You got some of the landing burn. That's not that's not the entry burn. The entry burn is up here. You got some of the landing burn. Yo, my guy, that's amazing. Yeah, see that little line right there, chat? That little one. This guy. That's some of the that's some of the landing burn, dude. Yo, awesome shot. Hell yeah. Yeah. The supersonic retro propulsion is up here. That happened. The landing burn happens over here. Did you? I mean, the entry burn happens over here. You got the landing burn. That's freaking sick, dude. That's cool. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's amazing. Did I see Vulcan's 
post. Yeah, yeah, people, a bunch of people have linked it. Here, I can show Balkans too. Let's see, ready? Oh, beginning chill down on Merlin, the Merlin engine here. See? Hey. Nice shot. So WD-40 shot yeah, his looking up. this way. Vulcan is 90 degrees, you're north. But yeah, see, look, look over there. Hey, hey, that's so cool. Very nice, very nice streak shots all around. Seven, three month resub. Thank you, sir. Very nice, very nice, very nice, you two. does it okay so now what they're doing here is at, when they shut the engine off previously they started inerting it and started getting the liquid oxygen and, and the rp1 out of it by purging the engine uh what they're doing now is they're re they're replumbing the uh liquid oxygen and the rp1 back into that merlin 1d back to basically prime it for this burn you should see a green flash from the triethyl aluminum and triethyl borane cartridges reigniting here so there should be a green flash that pops out of this thing and then the engine will turn on yeah see there's some of that oxygen right there that's the that's that's oxygen that was in a liquid form that hit the vacuum and went from liquid to gas to solid instantly that's well that's what that chunk of stuff is it's not ice that's solid oxygen how do you like the picture of the moon I sent you very nice. I, I'm not sure I saw them, Clayton, but... Saturday's question. Do you think Elon still watches all the launches? Oh, yeah. In some remote capacity. In some remote capacity, yes. Okay. I'm back. Chill down. It's looking... I want solid oxygen with sprinkles on it. <laughs> Soxygen. It's called Sox. That's what, it, that's what it's called. Okay, Shiva should be back here very soon. Welcome back to our See? webcast of the Falcon 9 mission carrying the Imaging X-Ray Polarimetry Explorer, or XB satellite for our customer, NASA. We've had a great mission hey, so far. The Falcon 9 launched on time at 1 a.m. Oh, Eastern time from the Kennedy Space <laughs> Center. Nice shot, though. We successfully recovered the first Hell stage. Yeah. And nice the shot, dude. Stage completed How you doing? its first burn, taking the XB satellite into its initial parking orbit. That's where now, the satellite wants to go. about uh, 10 or so seconds Jonas, away it wants to go into equatorial. from a second ignition of the Merlin vacuum engine. That'll carry the second stage and it's the a chill XB down. Satellite thermal conditioning of the, the engine as they purge it after orbit. every time it fires they purge it with nitrogen so that uh second because burn called second is engine corrosive start number as hell. two coming up shortly. true story i'm back startup okay here we go stand by for the green flash so there's ignition of the second stage engine yep, that looked good this burn was expected it to didn't last look, it wasn't very seconds. green but eh. now the initial orbit that the first stage uh, excuse me, the second stage went into. This is an on orbit plane change, guys. A, 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 a coplanar normal a inclination change burn. Energy. You don't so see this, this very often. It's taking us down to zero inclination. That means we'll be flying over the equator and it'll put us into yeah, a him. circular yeah, 600 by 600 kilometer orbit. You're looking at live views of the Merlin vacuum engine and some. Uh, it's liquid oxygen coming out, Sile. Guidance. Okay, stand by for the Seco 2 call. Yeah, Zonka, that's right. Yeah, I know, Vulcan. STP3 <laughs> did this too, but it did it in Geo. No, Look no, at no, that! No, 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 no. Look at the Without left-hand turn it made. Engine, the Merlin vacuum engine has what shut the down. frick? 
the launch That's team so will nuts, be dude. reviewing the orbital parameters. Stand by for the orbit insertion. Stand by for NOI. Well, there we go. Call, nominal orbital the insertion. No ice. Orbit right above the you equator. You see that? That's what I mean about. That's what I mean about. That's not normal. That that doesn't happen now, all the time. You see the left hand turn that it took? Unreal. To Falcon 9's second stage. We've got payload deployment coming up <laughs> in about 33 minutes. That's why, despite this satellite being so small, it needed a big rocket like Falcon 9. It wasn't that it can't get yeah, it into space, because but it needed us, to do that. On time launch at about 1 a.m. Eastern time, followed by successful ascent, then stage separation. It's we just listing lazily to the left. Stage, and we've completed so, two man, this Elon Musk burn. must know some maneuvers. Uh, and the booster and actually, actually it was a, a live shot of the second stage and the XB satellite above Normal. planet Earth currently yeah! over Africa. Now the booster that supported the XB launch today of signal Melindy successfully landed got an AOS for through Melindy time on our drone ship named Just Read the Instructions that was stationed out in the Atlantic Ocean. As long as there's a ground station, Florida. Nicotina, they could. Reusability is a key part of SpaceX's mission. They can to increase get a signal the until the batteries run out. To space, and we also yeah, have corn. brand new fairing halves on Can't take it for, gran we'll for granted. This is not easy to do. It's on a very difficult. Vessel named Bob. Bob. There's another great shot of NASA's Imaging X-ray Polarimetry Explorer, or XB. This mission is the first satellite that's dedicated to measuring the polarization of x-rays coming it gimbals from high motor energy not, objects you don't need to gimbal like very much in space and supernova it's the first uh nasa launch services program mission that's ever been launched from the launch pad 39a a historic launch pad at cape canaveral and it's spacex's fifth as part of that program this program helps launch space yeah to username they'll deorbit this stage this stage will be disposed for our universe Fast and now, Furious. The XB satellite drift. does mark also Falcon 9's first launch to an equatorial orbit. The satellite is currently in a uh, zero XB, degree XB chan so orbit above our crater at about 600 above the Earth's surface. Sugoi. About a minute away from payload deployment. And uh, once we get into payload deployment, I don't know, w, maybe. the XB satellite will then get to proceed with its two-year mission now xb is an orbital 27 degree on-orbit plane change badger that's some kerbal that's some kerbal maneuvers right there objects that we can't recreate in last year on planet Earth. Experience. so we'll use the telescopes <laughs> on xb to observe Sorry. them in parts of our universe over the next month the satellite crazy team mission will conduct checkouts of the vehicle they'll extend a boom that holds three telescopes on the satellite and then they'll start to begin uh, they'll start observing some of those astrophysical objects the first Stand by one for deploy. will be a supernova remnant, yeah, arrow. so the remains pretty insane. The, the ground track looks ridiculous. In the Cassiopeia constellation, uh, it's an object that's about 11,000 light years from planet and Earth. And payload separation confirmed. There she goes. So there's confirmation of payload separation. The XB satellite floating away a triangle? from the da, na, 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 na. Whoa, the solar begin panels! It's two year mission. Oh! To study some of the most energetic The solar panels deployed! We got to see it! The cosmos. Oh, that's dope! That, this was so uh, worth waiting up for! End our webcast coverage for today. That was legit! This was Freaking so we want to give a big thanks to NASA for entrusting us with today's mission. Yeah, I know, Sean. SpaceX's that's cool. NASA science mission. To it's not an antenna W. The it's the solar panels. We also want to give a you can big see thanks the solar to the range and the Federal there. Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. And of course, that thank was you dope, for tuning dude. In, and we'll see you again for the next launch. Yo, let's go! Look, the freaking solar's right there. That's awesome! Bruh. Bruh. That was super freaking cool. Yo! Oh! They deployed! Oh, that's so legit! That's not every day you get to see that from this angle. Oh, that's so cool! It left the solar panels open! Oh, I'm, I'm nerding out hard! Oh, man! 
That is so legit, dude. Holy crap. No, come back. <laughs> dude, that was sick. Oh my god, that was so worth it. Man, did you see that? The solar panels flipped up. That was so cool. It waved at us. It did wave at us. You want to see it again? Here, I'll show you. So watch, watch right here and right there, okay? Uh, <laughs> that's so cool. What? I'll show it one more time. Watch, ready? Spring. I know, Nick, right? Isn't it cool? Hey, thanks. Good night. All right, Rams. And then a little bit later, watch the panels again. All right, right here. Watch them. Ready? Click. Tink. Solar panel deploy confirmed. Oh, that's so, see, solar panels are usually spring loaded. They're that it's not like Kerbal where they kind of animate open and close. They're just on a spring, like a mouse trap. Just <laughs> that's how most solar panels work. So I use the solar panels to do that. Dragon Dragon One's solar panels used to do that when Dragon One flew. It's just it's literally just on a spring. Think think a mouse trap, just like that. Just <laughs> that's it. So it's very rare you get to see them deploy like that. That's really cool. It's not what you expected, is it? It's, it's literally just on a spring. That's it, because that's easy. A spring doesn't, spring can't, springs don't fail. Well, they do, but not like this. It cuts down on the complexity. Absolutely mine, yep. Isn't that cool? Lucy's panels would have been more slower than this, right? Yeah, probably a little bit. Oh. That's so cool. See, it's just a little mouse trap. Spring. All right, Jazzos. Good night. It's you know, it's funny. That's always funny to me. How it's always a spring or something. It's something small like that. You you wouldn't expect. You expect some like electric motor and some crazy like pneumatic system, because, because you know it's this already complicated rocket. No, no, a spring. That's it. Yeah, Jay, yeah. <laughs> that has a lot of springs in it. How much iron does your factory use, by the way? I don't know off the top of my head. You gotta keep it simple. Even with something complicated like spaceflight, you gotta keep it simple. I wanna see the solar panels pop out again. <laughs> it's like, I can do it! I, I'm good! I'm flying! I'm flying! It's T-posing for us, guys! It's T-posing for us. Bro, that satellite just T-posed for you. You should be grateful. It just T-posed for him. I need to sleep. I need to sleep, man. Assert dominance, T-pose. <laughs> Either that or it was doing the good game. Good game. Good game. <laughs> All right, fellas. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the launch coverage. That was fun. We had three launch coverages. Uh, three, three launch coverage. Three launches today. I covered three launches today. That was fun. That was a good time. Here, you know what? If you want to keep watching this mission, I think NASA's still going. Let me take a look. Yep. Yeah, NASA's still going. Let's see what they're up to. All right, guys. I'm glad you like it. I'll see you guys tomorrow around noon. Might be a little bit later. Uh, we got Icarus, Space News, and then My Summer Car tomorrow. Oh, that's going to be fun. I'm In terms of launches, the next launch that we got up on the schedule here is New Shepard at 945, NS-19. That's a crew launch. It's a suborbital launch. It goes up and comes right back down, but it, it, people are launching on it. And then after that, on Sunday, we have uh, uh, Proton-M with the Express AMU sat, which is a Russian uh, TV satellite. Uh, that's on the, uh, the 12th at 